Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, so again, just going to carry on where we left off. Um, and if you need any help, just uh, join the Discord. The link will be in the description. Okay, so I'm actually going to start off by cleaning a few things up. So I'm going to go into our player controller script and it looks like we didn't actually use these variables. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of them. Uh, there's no need for them anymore. Uh, and I'm also going to make a few things private. Uh, stuff that we don't really need to see anymore. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that with the input movement and the input view. We only made that public to make sure that they're working. And looking at it, I think that's all we need. So I'm going to go back into Unity. And I actually want to make a few more adjustments to our player jump. Uh, just to make sure we can get it you know, nice and smooth. Okay, so jump height. I actually want to change that to let's say around 5 and the fall off to around 0.4 and then we'll also change the gravity to around let's say 0.03 and then um, so I was playing around earlier and I think these those minor changes just made it feel a lot better so you can see as I jump around it just feels a lot nicer um, again I'll just keep playing with it as I go along obviously if you spend more time uh, you can actually get it feeling really nice like I have in my project. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to add some input so that we can actually uh, crouch and prone without um, going in the inspector. So just inside our character action maps I'm going to add two actions. Um, so the first one, well you can probably guess what these are, they're just going to be our crouch and our prone. Okay. And then for the bindings, uh, for the crouch binding, I'm literally going to put in uh, C on my keyboard. And for the prone, I'm going to put X on my keyboard. So the prone is going to be done a little bit differently. Um, I actually want to make it so if I hold crouch, it um, prones. So I'm going to click on prone. I'm going to change the action type to pass through. Um, and then I'm going to add another binding. And this binding, I'm actually going to change it to C. Um, and then if I go to our crouch here, I'm going to click on C and just make sure you uh, add an interaction for tap. Um, that way, if I hold down C, it's not going to call the crouch and the prone. Um, and then if I go to C, add an interaction and this time we'll use hold. Okay, and now because we're using interactions, uh, we actually need to go to X and set an interaction. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a bug, but for some reason... Um, you get errors if you don't um, have an interaction on all of your actions, uh, key bindings, if one of them has it. It's kind of weird. Uh, maybe give it a test and see. Um, but for X, I'm just going to add a press interaction. All right, so I'm going to click save and let's actually go and plug those in. So let's go back into the character controller and uh, let's create two functions. So again, you can probably guess what these are. So we're going to have private void for crouch and a private void for prone. All right, and then let's set up our button mapping. Uh, so similar to this jump, I'm actually just going to duplicate this line uh, twice. Then instead of our jump action here, we're going to have our crouch and our prone and then just make sure you call the respective functions just like that. Okay, so now we can literally just come in here and we can alter our stance. Uh, so say uh, I'll set out player stance equals player stance dot crouch. And then in the prone, we do the exact same thing, except obviously you set it to prone. Now, I want to say that that's just going to work off the bat now. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So let's hit play. All right, so crouching works, prone works. Um, but as you can see, we can't really get back to stand. Holding C does put us into prone though. Um, okay, so now about getting back to stand, uh, so we can add a few options in here. So say for example, uh, when we press crouch, we can check to see what the current stance is. 
So we'll say if the player stance is already set to crouch, uh, then we can just do player stance dot stand. Uh, oh no, what am I doing? Player stance equals uh, dot stand. Okay, and then don't forget to add a return after that, otherwise it's just going to continue and run this line down here. All right, so let's give that a go. So I'll hit play, um, and now I can spam C and T back. Nice. All right, so at this point, we can actually go through and play with the variable we made for the player stance smoothing. Um, so that'll obviously increase and decrease the speed you actually go into that, that stance. So just play around until you find something that matches the type of game you're going for. Make it slower if you want ultra realistic, etc. All right, so we should be able to get under these now. And if I prone under this one, cool. All nice and it just works. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna lift this a little bit higher and um, show you a little bug. So you can probably guess what it is. If I crouch, come under here and then stand up. We're now inside that object, which is obviously not very good. I mean, we're not recreating Fallout here. Um, so we'll add a few checks. So the way I'm going to do this is if I expand our character controller. Um, so we'll add a transform for the feet down here. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just uh, say if we're crouched and we want to stand, we'll just do a quick check sphere to see um, that there'll be no colliders when we stand. And obviously if that's all good, we stand. And we'll do the same for crouch. So it's actually quite easy to set up. Um, so inside our player, I'm gonna create an empty. And I'm literally just gonna call this feet transform. And then I'm gonna go back into our script. And then obviously I'm gonna create a variable to reference this. Um, so I'm actually gonna add it up here under references. So we'll create a public transform for feet transform cool and then underneath stance I'm also going to add a public float for um, so when we do our checks we can't have an exact check because uh, if we check uh, zero zero like literally on our feet our feet's obviously going to be touching the ground so it'll fail instantly so we'll add a um, stance check error margin which we can set to something very small and to be fair that doesn't actually need to be a public let's just set that to a private and we can set that to something very small like 0 0.05 um, and don't forget to specify to float so just hit F alright so now we have our error margin um, we don't need the radius because we can get that from our character controller. So let's just add in a few functions. So right at the bottom, I'm going to add in a private bool for can stand. Um, actually, let's uh, we'll change this. We'll make it generic so we can use the same function twice. Um, so we'll just do. I'll just call it stance check. Um, and then inside here, we'll take a float for the height. So just a float, and we'll have stance check height. All right, and by default, uh, let's just return false. All right, but we need to do a few things in here. So when we create a sphere, a sphere, sorry, a capsule. We need a start point, an end point, and a radius. And we'll also need a layer mask so we can tell it to ignore the player. So let's create that layer mask. So down here, I'm just going to create a public layer mask. And I'm just going to call this um, player mask. Um, and actually, I don't want it down here in the stance. Let's just have it up here in the settings. So we'll have our player mask. Um, and what this basically is, is it's going to be everything except the player. Um, but we'll go and set that in a second. So let's just um, continue with our script here. Okay, 
So with our stance check, so we obviously need a start point. So we're going to create a vector 3 for start equals new vector 3. Um, and we want the exact same thing for our end. So I'm going to change these to var. So a vector 3 for start, vector 3 for end, and uh, then what we'll return is actually a ch uh, physics dot check sphere. So we'll use these two. So we'll have our start and our end. And then you can see we need our um, I done sphere. <laughs> uh, we want check capsule. I don't know why I keep thinking sphere. So check capsule. Uh, so now we need the radius. Um, so the radius we can just get from our character controller dot radius. Um, and then it wants our layer mask, which it's already suggesting our player mask, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so now we need to set up the start and end. Um, so you can probably guess that this is where our feet transform comes in. Uh, so our x for we just want our feet transform dot x and the y let's just do it exactly the same dot y and feet transform dot z okay so um we want to be accessing the positions um to just make sure we don't forget like i just did <laughs> cool all right except obviously we want to modify these values um so for example, this Y here, we want to add our uh, error margin. Um, and what we also want to add is, um, this is what Unity doesn't tell you, and it took me a little while to figure it out, is with the start and the end, it doesn't um, see this line here, that would be the end, and this line down here, that would be the start. So obviously if we put that down by the feet, um, the radius is actually going to force it to to collide. Um, so obviously when we do our calculations, uh, we need to make sure to include the radius. Um, so we'll add that as well. So we already have that down here. So you see it's a few little calculations. Um, so we take the radius and the error margin and we add it to our starting point so it starts a little bit off the ground. And I'm just going to copy that and pop that in the end because uh, we want to essentially do the same thing, except obviously we want to take away. Cool. And just like that, let's quickly test that it works. Um, so I'm just going to throw it in the update, which is very disgusting, but we'll just do that for now. So we will do a stance check and then the heights we want to check. Uh, so for our stand, we obviously want to just grab our player stand stance dot um, capsule. What, what did we call it? Collider, wasn't it? Stance collider dot height. And um, what I'll do is I'll just let's create a public bool that's called test. And what we'll do is we'll just set test equals start check. So it's going to be constantly hitting it, um, but this is basically, we're just going to make sure that it's actually working the way we intend. So if I hit play here, so firstly it's going to come out true. Um, or it's, oh wait, no, it wouldn't because of the player mask. Um, so let's collapse these colliders, we don't need those. Uh, click on your player and then click layer, and then we want to add a layer. Um, and just beneath everything, add a player layer. And then click back on your player and just assign it that layer. And then when it asks, just say yes. Uh, so we're going to apply it to all the children. Um, so now that that's set, obviously we need to tell our layer mask to use that. So click on your player mask, click everything, and then just go back in and take off player. So it'll be everything except player. Um, and then we also need to assign our feet. Uh, so just click and drag that into our feet. And let's hit play now and see how it behaves. Okay, so you see, 
Um, it'll be false now because obviously we can stand. But if I crouch and go underneath here, you see it gives us a collision. Um, and same for if I prone and go under here, it gives us a collision. So let's go back into our update. So what we also want to do here is we don't just want to, uh, we also want to add the height of our stance check height here. Um, so it's very simple to add. Uh, we just want to add it to this position Y. Um, it doesn't matter whether it's before or after the minuses. So I'm just going to add it onto the end. Just our stance check height there. And if I go back into Unity, let's just move the feet transform uh, set it to minus one um, or click and drag it to the bottom of your feet. Um, so our feet transform should be right at the bottom there. All right, we're going to go back into Unity and now let's change the stand to our crouch. Just make sure that that's working as well. Um, so make sure our player starts us on prone. Going to hit play. And let's check. So if I go under the crouch, See, it doesn't go to true, but then if I go under here, it goes to true. All right, so that's working just the way we want. So I'm going to get rid of our test variable and take it out of the update. And uh, we're just going to put that in a few places. Uh, so we'll use this variable now. Um, I'm going to hide that inside our crouch. So we need to check a few things. Um, so just before we stand, we'll check we'll just add another if and then we'll say if stand stand check nope stance check if stance check and then we need to give it a height um, so we want to stand so let's give it the uh, stance um, and we want our so we want our player stand stance and we'll just grab the capsule uh, stance collider dot height. All right, so if we collide, um, we just want to return. Just ignore that we press the button. Um, and then same goes for the crouch. So if I bring this down here, and instead of the stand, we use our crouch. Um, we just wanted to return as well. Okay, so. Let's go back into Unity and just make sure that we can't uh, break it anymore. So I'm going to hit play. Let's go through. All right, so firstly, let's stand. We'll go under here. We'll try to stand and it won't let us, which is good. Um, and we'll go prone, go under here, try to stand up or do anything. It shouldn't let us, but if we go to the right here, it should let us crouch and then it should let us stand. Cool. Nice, simple and easy. Um, we're going to move on to something a little different in the next episode, um, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.